Hello and welcome to this Uni Taster On Demand event today, where we're going to be looking at university courses in forensic science. And I'm delighted to be joined by three speakers who are going to guide you through what you might well expect if you are going to study forensic science. And that's Victoria, George and Viv, who are all joining us from Keele University. Now, in a second, I'm going to pass things to Victoria, um, George and Viv for, to, to introduce themselves. But just to give you an idea of what to expect on this event, we're going to look at four main themes why you might want to consider courses in forensic science, what to expect if you do study forensic science, maybe some application tips and also a guide to potential careers you might want to go on to as well. But with that, conscious you've always tuned in to hear from the speakers, not for myself, I'll pass to Victoria, please. Hi, I'm Victoria Cartwright and um, I've been at Keele for 15 years. I teach on the Forensic Science programme and the main modules I look at is uh, the areas of forensic biology, so looking at things like DNA profiling. I'm also the admissions tutor um, at Keele, so later on I will provide some more information about sort of application tips and the sort of qualifications you need to be taking at level three if you're considering studying forensic science at higher education. Hi everyone, uh, I'm George Handley, I'm a lecturer in crime scene investigation. I studied myself a forensic science degree, uh, largely because I was interested in, um, in crime scene investigation in general, um, but I also liked science and enjoyed that at school, so it was natural for me to choose something that I enjoyed. Uh, so following on from my degree, I took up a post with the police where I worked as a crime scene investigator for 10 years. I got to go out to crime scenes. The really good thing about that was I also really enjoyed photography. So I got to practice photography as part of my job role and also go out to see lots of varied, uh, varied crime scenes and put into practice lots of the skills that I'd learned at university. And then just recently I moved to Kiel where I became a lecturer in crime scene investigation. So I now teach on several modules, largely focused around crime scene investigation. So we look at setting up mock crime scenes for students so they can get very hands on and very practical based um, as part of the forensic science programme. Hi everyone, my name is Viv. I am a lecturer in forensic anthropology and biology. Um, for those of you that aren't really aware, forensic anthropology is the recovery and analysis of human remains. Um, I'm also the exams officer um, and I help out with careers um, and I will talk more about my background and my role later on. Uh, back to Vicky. So if you're considering forensic science, you might be aware of the different areas that forensic science covers. A forensic science program would normally cover several of these areas, uh, particularly areas of sort of DNA profiling, so forensic biology and the analysis of um, maybe explosives, drugs of abuse, so the chemistry aspect, as well as um, areas of sort of crime scene investigation, which George will tell you a little bit more about. What you can look at when you're looking at forensic science programmes is that you can just study forensic science as a subject and that will cover lots of different areas but you can specialise in specific areas of forensics as well so there are opportunities to do courses in just areas such as forensic biology or forensic chemistry. I've mentioned areas here such as things like odontology and pathology a lot of those are areas that might be covered uh, briefly in forensic science programmes but more likely it might be something you would specialise in at a later stage so after doing an undergraduate degree it might be something you would consider doing at master's level or we have a lot of students that go on to do sort of postgraduate research as well. Um, the bottom point there forensic psychology a lot of people always ask me about forensic psychology most courses do not cover forensic psychology as part of a forensic science course. So if that is an aspect that you're particularly interested in, it'd be more likely that you might be doing a psychology degree and then specialising in forensic psychology as part of that degree. So just to understand the difference between different programmes. At Keele, we do offer um, a forensic science programme, but you will see that there are also things like crime scene investigation or forensic investigation programmes available. A lot of the forensic investigation or forensic um, crime scene investigation concentrate more on the application of um, collection of evidence and processing those in terms of crime scenes, whereas a forensic science programme will cover aspects of um, crime scene analysis, but also a lot more to do with the analysis of that evidence in the laboratory. What you will see when you're looking at uh, different courses, and you can look at that this through UCAS, is that you can sometimes study forensic science with another subject. 
and that could be things such as law or criminology or other science subjects, which could be like biology or chemistry. These are normally called combined honours or dual honours courses. Now, one thing a lot of um, forensic science programmes offer is if you're not currently taking um, the correct qualifications, is that you can actually extend um, your degree length by doing what we call a foundation year course. And this provides you with the science um, background you need to carry on to do forensic science. And also there's the opportunity sometimes to do what we call an integrated masters. And this is where um, you will again extend the duration of your course, but actually come out with a master's qualification rather than uh, just a bachelor's uh, qualification. As I said in the previous slide, yes, you can do sort of forensic science as a course, which covers a lot more areas of forensic science. And these will be very diverse depending on which university you study at. But you can also do more specific forensic science programmes as well, sort of looking at forensic biology or even maybe um, more of the sort of cyber security aspects. And this is obviously a very popular um, area at the moment. So I'm just going to pass over to George now. Hi, so as part of the forensic science course, I teach on crime scene investigation and I use skills that I learned throughout my time as a scene investigator. And I try to put into practice um, mock crime scenes so that we can get students very hands on. So as part of a forensic science programme, we like to look at integrating very practical based skills, both out in the field, but also as part of the, the lab based analysis. And one of the modules that I teach on, we set up a crime scene where as students, you would go in, process the crime scene, which would involve things like photography and note taking and sketching and recording the crime scene. We would then go on to evidence collection where we would recover it and package evidence. We would take it back to the lab where we can then conduct that analysis. And we would see that all the way through to what would be a final um, scenario where we would see a case through uh, almost from start to finish so from the crime scene all the way through to it being taken to court so we like to give a full flavor of um, the whole forensic science overview and getting very hands-on within the course and I'll let Viv tell you a bit more about the practical aspects that she sorts out. Hi again, everyone. Um, like I said before, I teach forensic anthropology um, and I didn't always want to be an anthropologist. Um, I actually wanted to be an FBI agent or drive an ice cream van. Um, and when I was at university, I studied um, behavioral and environmental biology. And it was only when I was about to finish my degree that I was figuring out what to do as a career. And I realized that I really wanted a job where I could solve problems and apply my knowledge of science and biology to real world scenarios um, or real world problems. And for me, forensics kind of fell perfectly into that career plan I had. Um, so I went and did a master's and a PhD in forensic anthropology um, and entomology, which is the study of insects associated with decomposing remains. And in between doing those studies at university, I worked um, for the police as well. So I was fortunate in that I got to continue my learning, but also I was getting work experience, um, seeing how cases were worked whilst within the police force. Um, I mentioned before that anthropology is the um, recovery and analysis of skeletal and decomposed remains. Um, and what I love about anthropology is that um, I get to use my knowledge as a biologist to help find missing people. So as an anthropologist, I will work alongside the police and I might go out into the field looking for missing people that might involve looking for graves um, or getting on a boat and looking for victims of drowning. And then when we find people and we have the remains back in the lab, we analyze them using um, methods where we look at different parts of the skeleton to determine how old someone was when they died um, or how tall they were. Um, and also time of death, I can calculate time of death for individuals. So I tend to work more with people who've been dead um, a fairly long time, not really a medical examiner. Um, so um, um, the reason why I love my job is because I get to go outside just as much as I work in the lab. Um, and for me, because I started out as an environmental biologist, that was a big thing. Um, so when I teach anthropology, what I like to do is not only do we work a lot inside the lab, um, analyzing remains, but I also like to take students outside and we might scatter some uh, 
fake plastic bones in a wood somewhere and practice mapping techniques. We practice um, skills on how to excavate graves and I will teach students how to use the environment um, and factors related to the environment to locate um, and analyze missing people. So that's what I do. I love it. I think students really enjoy it as well because it's a little bit different and they do get to get out of the lab and get their hands dirty. Um, so that's what I do. Um, back to Vicky. So thanks for that, George and Viv. Hopefully that's given you a, a flavour of what uh, forensic science courses offer and maybe give you the opportunity to consider uh, forensic science as a qualification. So if you are interested in uh, studying forensic science, the next question probably be what kind of uh, qualifications will you need? Um, we normally offer um, and accept a range of qualifications in higher education. So typically looking at things like A-levels, BTEC courses, but also access to higher education courses, as well as obviously a range of um, international qualifications as well. One of the main things to consider, and this has come across probably in what we've been providing, is that you will need um, quite a strong science background. And as I mentioned first, if that's something you are um, currently studying, so things like forensic, um, things like biology or chemistry, what you would possibly need to do is want a fair nation year programme to provide you with that science background. In terms of what science qualifications you need, um, most of the universities will be looking at chemistry and or biology. So um, a little bit more about why I chose forensic science as an undergraduate was because I did have a passion for chemistry and biology and I wanted a qualification that used both of those subjects. A little bit similar to what Viv was saying as well, not only did I enjoy those science subjects, I wanted to apply them in a, a manner that probably did affect people's lives. So I wanted to work in the laboratory, probably a little bit different than what George and Viv wanted to do. I definitely prefer things to be uh, drier, not very keen on the sort of wet weather. So I was the one that preferred to be with a pipette in the lab um, and enjoyed sort of the chemistry and biology side. So I wanted to do that, but wanted to have an application where I could see where it could actually be you know, applied to society. So, as I said, I delivered the biology side, but I also get involved quite a lot with the chemistry aspect um, of the courses as well. So that would be things like the analytical side. So looking sometimes at analysing different substances using some of our analytical techniques. It could be things like chromatography, spectroscopy. So because there's a lot of chemistry and biology in most forensic science courses, this is why um, most universities would be asking for that level three qualification. And this could be an A-level, but it also could be something like a BTEC, typically maybe in applied science or forensic and criminal investigation. Some universities will ask you to provide more information if you're studying something like a BTEC or an access course to make sure that it meets that sort of science subject requirements. So making sure you are um, studying enough chemistry or biology. But again, if there will be um, some exceptions and they will accept other science A-levels, including maths at some universities as well. Uh, finally, just to give you a bit of information about once you've done a forensic science uh, degree or something similar, what kind of career opportunities are available to you? So these are actually some of our students that have studied at Keele. And Obviously, a lot of students will want to work for what we call uh, forensic science providers, so things like Cellmark or LGC, um, but um, a lot of our students will go on to work with the police as well. So as a crime scene investigator, um, similar to the role that George explained when she uh, left university. In addition to that, obviously, some students will go on to do more sort of further research, so things like uh, PhD. And we've got Matthew on the bottom row there that did a PhD first and now he's doing what we call postdoctoral researcher um, at a university in the Netherlands and also we had Chris there that actually did a PhD at uh, Kiel and is now actually a lecturer on our chemistry program. But in addition to this it's not just the police and forensic science providers because the nature of most forensic science programs are very analytical it means that it opens up opportunities in all areas of science. Just to give you an example, we've got Laura and Alice on the bottom row there, one working as a, a quality control manager in a perfume manufacturing company, and Alice that is looking at sort of the um, analytical side of food manufacturing. So it isn't just forensic science where the science that you've learned as part of the degree can be applied. 
Well, hopefully we've provided all the information you, know, you would like today on forensic science uh, and there's some contact details there.